Hello everyone, uh, good morning and welcome to today's session. I am Rajkumar here. So in today's session we are going to talk about uh, the most confusing words in English. Have you ever got confused with English words? Words like advice, advise, affect, effect, among, between. Such kind of words often confuse us. Not because they are similar but because they have similar pronunciation sometimes or sometimes we do not know in which context to use which word. So remember this kind of words however have different meanings in each context. Say for example we have advice A-D-V-I-C and A-D-V-I-S-E. So A-D-V-I-C when it comes to this advice it is advice which means it's a noun form of the advice and advice is the verb form of the same. So they have similar different kind of meanings in terms of uh, usage. So this particular concept, the most confusing words, uh, is often used uh, by companies especially uh, in their uh, assessment tests in verbal ability and uh, companies like TCS, Tech Mahindra or uh, Infosys, Wipro, all these top recruiters always use this particular concept as a part of the verbal uh, ability uh, section to test one's capacity, a student's capacity in understanding the words without any confusion. So let's uh, try to look at some of such words today and let us try to understand uh, the meanings of these words and uh, let us also learn how to use them in proper sentences so that we get a hands-on experience of uh, understanding these words in terms of their meaning and in terms of their usage. If you are ready, let's begin the session. So let's begin with the first uh, word, advice and advise, A-D-V-I-C-E and A-D-V-I-S-E. Advice is a noun. For example, Rahul gave Gita good advice. Advise, A-D-V-I-S-E is a verb. Rahul advised Gita to avoid fried foods to stay healthy. So now do you differentiate between these two A D V I C E while this indicates a noun well this particular word is used as a noun in a sentence A D V I S E is used as a verb in terms of their usage so advised Gita Rahul advised Gita Rahul gave Gita an advice moving on to next uh, word affect and effect Affect is usually a verb. Rahul's music affected Gita's ability con to concentrate. Effect is usually a noun. Her teacher's words had a great effect on him. Affect is a verb. So it has different forms of it. Affect, affected, affecting. So it can be used in different forms of it. You can use it in past tense. You can also use it in Present tense, you could also use it in continuous form, uh, continuous uh, tense. But when, uh, when it comes to effect, effect is the result of what happens to you. Okay? So his father, say for example, his father's words had a great effect on him. The result of his father's words. So effect is a result, while the affect is the action. Going on to next uh, page. Among and amongst. Among is the preferred and most common variant of this word in American English. Amongst is more common in British English. Remember, among or amongst, both of them have the same meaning. It's not similar meaning, it's the same meaning. But however, among is most commonly used in American English and amongst is used most commonly in British English. Moving on. Among and between. Among expresses a collective or loose relationship of several items. Example, Rohan found a letter hidden among the papers on the desk. Remember, among is a word used to express the difference between more than two, while two is used to talk about a connection between two things. So between often used for two items, for example, 
they are building a new road between Chennai and Bangalore. I'm sure now you are able to understand the difference between among and between. Between is used for just two items to, to convey the what you call the difference or connection between two things. Whereas among is a word used to express the, the loose relationship or uh, let's say the collective uh, relationship if it is more than two or if it involves more than two or three people. Moving on, assure, ensure and ensure. Assure means to tell someone that something will definitely happen. Assure means to tell someone that something will definitely happen. Example, Rahul assured Gita that no one would stop her at the event. Assure, which means you, you definitely, you mean you are convincing someone that something will definitely happen. So that's a kind of an assure. Uh, that's what we call assure. When it comes to ensure, ensure means to guarantee or make sure of something. Rohan took steps to ensure that no one failed in his subject. Ensure, to make sure, to guarantee, to see to it that everyone gets the best in his subject. So Rohan took steps to ensure that no one failed in his subject. And ensure means to take out an insurance policy. Example, Rahul was glad his shop was insured against damage caused by rowdies. So, insure is nothing but to take care of one's life, to take care of one's property and uh, in terms of monetary returns. Say, for example, if some damage happens to your property or to your personality or to your family, some amount will be paid by a particular company, the insured, uh, insuring company. So, that's what we call insure. Insure means to take out an insurance policy. I have insured my life against ill health. Moving on. Breath and breath. Breath is a noun. It's the air that goes in and out of your lungs. Breath. B-R-E-A-T-H. Breath. See, we often use people, we often hear people using take a deep breath, which is a wrong statement. You're supposed to use take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. B-R-E-A-T-H is a noun. Take a deep breath. It's air that goes in and out of your lungs. Example, take a deep breath to relax. So B-R-E-A-T-H she is a verb. It means to exhale and inhale. Okay? The process of exhaling and inhaling is called breathing so which is a verb breathe is a verb we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide so breathe in breathe out breathe is a verb while breath is a noun moving on capital and capital capital has several meanings it can refer to an uppercase letter money or a city where a seat of government is located. Capital has several meanings. One second, please. Capital has several meanings. It can refer to an uppercase letter. We have it like you know, the capital letters in English. Okay, the uppercase uh, letter of uh, the language of English. Okay, it can also mean money capital investment that's what we say or it could also mean a city where a seat of government is located okay the capital of andhra pradesh the capital of india the capital of uh, tamil nadu okay so rohan visited tokyo the capital of japan so next capitol c a p i t o l means the building where a legislature meets rahul waited for rohan at the basement of the capital. So capital means it is a building usually referred to uh, a place where all the uh, elected members meet, the legislator meets. So that's what. But these days we find in uh, real estates, uh, you know, some apartments are also 
uh, termed or named as capitals okay we say that you know uh, like you know rohan's capital okay or uh, let's say you have different uh, you know buildings are also named as capital okay so capital is the upper case money or city of uh, uh, where the government is located capital means it is a building complement and complement c o m p l e m e n t is uh, complement which is which means something that completes something else it's often used to describe things that go well together peter's boots were a perfect complement to his jacket which means they complete something okay say for example peter has worn a black jacket and he wears a uh, a black uh, shoes they complement each other which means they support each other they complete the look of mr peter so complete completing something that's what we call complement next one complement c o m p l i m e n t is a nice thing to say rohan received many compliments for his acting skills received compliments compliment means uh, a statement of appreciation a nice word that we talk about others moving on to the next disinterested and uninterested disinterested means impartial not being partial example a panel of disinterested judges judged the singing context disinterested judges here means judges who are not partial to any one of the participants so that's what we call a panel of disinterested judges disinterested means impartial people uh, a group of judges who are not partial to anybody a panel of disinterested judges judge the singing context next one uninterested means bored or not wanting to be involved with something example Rahul was uninterested in attending drawing class. Uninterested means without interest, or showing disinterest in something, or feeling a, a complete uh, bored to 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 do something. That's what we call uninterested. Next one, defense and defense. D e f e n c e and d e f e n s e. D e f e n s e is a standard expression in American English. while d e f e n c e is found mainly in british english so both expressions are used but however d e f e n c e is more uh, british while d e f e n s e is more american in terms of their usage moving on to next uh, pair emigrate and immigrate emigrate means to move away from a city or country to live somewhere else example Peter's grandfather emigrated from Canada 60 years ago. Emigrate. I read again. Emigrate means to move away from a city or a country to live somewhere else. Many people emigrate from India to America. So they emigrate from one place to another. Emigrate means to move into a country from somewhere else. Rose's sister emigrated to Ireland in 2004 emigrate means to move away from a place emigrate means to move into a place i hope you got the difference very clearly say for example raj emigrated from india which means from india i left to some other country whatever it is i immigrated say raj immigrated to america which means raj came into america i immigrated to america around 10 years ago i immigrated from india around 10 years ago emigrate means to move away from a place immigrate means to move into a place it could be a country it could be a city it could be a place a capital city of Or, or for that matter, any any area is called emigrate and immigrate. So you got the difference between emigrate and immigrate. So let's move on to the next uh, acronyms here. 
E dot G and I dot E. We often come across these words, but we do not know. We just simply use it, uh, uh, for example, or uh, say, for example, we use it like uh, uh, differently. You know, that is, that's how we use it, but we do not know what they literally mean. These both are acronyms used often uh, in English. Uh, in fact, uh, they are derived from Latin language. These two Latin abbreviations are often mixed up but E dot G, which means exemplary gratia, means for example, while I dot E means yid yest, means that is. So these are the what you call the short forms or uh, the abbreviated forms which we often hear in terms of uh, their usage in English, but we often do not know which language they come from and what is their elaborated uh, forms. So, I dot E dot G means exemplary gratia, for example, I dot E means id est, which means that is. Next one, empathy and sympathy. Empathy is the ability to understand another person's feeling, while sympathy is a feeling of sorrow for someone else's suffering. So, empathy means to understand. You should be empathetic to your life partner, which means you should be able to understand the feelings of your life partner. Sympathy, we should feel sympathetic towards sick people. We should feel sympathetic towards people who are affected by COVID-19. Am I clear? So sympathy is all about understanding the feelings of others while, uh, sorry, empathy is all about uh, understanding the feelings of others while sympathy is all about feeling sorry or feeling uh, kind towards someone's sufferings. That is the difference. Moving on, farther and further. Farther refers to physical distance. Rohan can run farther than Rahul. Farther means far away. Far away. It refers to physical distance. Okay. So, whereas further means in addition to. So, further refers to metaphorical distance. It uh, sometimes means additional to what already exists. Rahul is further away from finishing his project than Rosie is. Cook for a further 10 minutes, which means in addition, additionally another 10 minutes. That's what it refers to. Farther indicates physical distance, while further indicates in addition to metaphorical distance. Next, flaunt and flout. Flaunt, F-L-A-U-N-T, flaunt means to show off. Rahul flaunted his stylish new outfit. Outfit means nothing but a dress. Okay, the new dress. Rahul flaunted means he showed off his stylish new dress. Flout means to make fun of, to disobey. Everyone flouted at her attire. Flouted means laugh at, mock at, or uh, tease at. Everyone teased her uh, for her attire, flouted her. Next one, gaff and giffy. Gaff, G-A-F-F, -F, gaff, is a type of spear or hook with a long handle. Okay, gaff is a spear or hook with a long handle. It's, a, it's a, an implement or it's a tool which is used, okay, with, with a lot of handle. You know, it's like, it looks like more like a spear spear you know you know the spear no so that's how it looks like a gaff rigged cutter a, a gaff is social blunder or mistake for example peter made a gaff when he called rosie by the wrong name so to make a mistake gaff g a f f e means to commit a mistake or it is a, a blunder but gaff is nothing but an instrument, okay, an implement uh, which is uh, similar to a spear. Next one, gray, G R A Y gray and G R E Y gray. G R A Y gray is the standard American English spelling. G R E Y is the standard British English spelling. So both of them refer to the color gray, or uh, what you call one of those uh, gray colors. Uh, one of those colors that we use, okay, gray. 
but uh, the spelling is slightly different because G-R-A-Y is more an American spelling while G-R-E-Y is a standard British English spelling. Next one, historic and historical. Historic means famous or important or influential. The Wright brothers made their historic first airplane flight. Historic, famous, important, influential. The Wright brothers made their historic first airplane flight. So historic means very important, a famous first airplane flight. So for example, say, <clears throat> uh, uh, say for example, Hyderabad has uh, got uh, a historic uh, significance with regard to its history because of its historical uh, monuments it is historic to all the visitors that come to India or to southern part of India so historic means famous while historical means related to history Gandhi is the most famous historical figure in Indian freedom struggle next one imply and inform Imply means to hint at something without saying it directly. Rohan implied that Rhea was in trouble. Imply means we do not directly say it, but we, we give a small hint at something. We say, uh, for example, I will test you tomorrow. It's a kind of a hint, which means you will certainly have uh, an examination tomorrow. It's a small test. Come prepared tomorrow for the class which means it's it's it means it means that i'll conduct a test i've given you a small hint so imply imply means to give hint that something will happen so without saying it directly whereas info means to deduce something that hasn't been stated directly so which means info is uh, info means it's nothing has been said directly but you need to from whatever someone has said it you need to deduce it you need to infer or you need to conclude for example, from these facts, we can infer that crime has been increasing in the city. It's and it's IT apostrophe S. It's and IT without apostrophe S. It's is a contra contraction of it is. It's a short form of it is. Okay. With apostrophe means it is. Without apostrophe means it is a possessive case. Okay, it's a possessive pronoun. Rahul needs to pack for his trip because it's only two days away. Next one. It's without apostrophe is a possessive pronoun that means belonging to it. Rohan is obsessed with both the book and its author. Its author means the author of that book. That's what it refers. Lay and lie. To lay means to put or to place. Lay your books on the table. Lay your hand on his shoulder. So lay, to place, to put. To lie means to recline or to rest. Peter will lie down for a nap. Lie means to relax, to sit, to sleep sometimes or to just rest. Be careful, the past tense of to lay is laid. Rosie laid out her outfit. The past tense of to lie is lay. Peter lay down for a nap over an hour ago. Next, lead, let. Lead, when it rhymes with the bed, refers to a type of metal. Remember, L-E-A-D also, it also can mean uh, lead, means to lead someone, okay, leadership. And L-E-A-D can also be uh, what you call pronounced as lead when we refer it, uh, to a metal. So it rhymes with the bed uh, refers to a type of metal. Lead is a metal. We use lead pencils, right? The lead is used to prepare pencils. So lead, L-E-A-D. Here in this context, it is pronounced as lead. When we refer to a metal, it is, refer, it is pronounced as lead. When we refer to it as a verb, which means to lead, okay, the leadership leading yes rosie wore a lead apron while the dentist x-rayed her teeth lead 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 apron okay lead apron a metal apron that's what okay lead is the past tense of the verb to lead 
which means to guide or to be first. Peter led the way. Learned and learnt. Learned is a standard expression in American English. Learnt is a standard expression in British English. So both of them are used. Okay, you can either say, I have learned the lesson today or I have learnt the lesson today. I have learned the lesson or I have learnt the lesson. Both of them are popularly used in Indian uh, linguistic practices. Okay, next one. Lose and lose. L O O S E lose means not firm or tight. It's an adjective. Rahul wore loose dress for the party. L O S E is always a verb. It means to misplace something or to be unvictorious in a game or context. Rohan was careful not to lose his ticket. Remember here, the biggest confusion we find is. Both of them are pronounced as lose only. L O O S C is pronounced as loose, which means not tight, very free, loose shirt, okay, loose pants, loose dress, okay. L O S C is also to be pronounced as loose. Loose means, you know, to be unvictorious, to lose a match, to misplace something. I'm giving you a gift. Don't lose this gift. L O S C, okay. So, but remember, uh, I hear a lot of people pronouncing L-O-S-E as loss, which is a wrong statement. L-O-O-S-E, loose, which is an adjective, which means loose shirt, loose pants, not firm. L-O-S-E, loose, which means unvictorious or to misplace something. L-O-S-S is loss. Loss is different from loose. L-O-S-S is loss. Okay, his business suffered heavy losses. Okay, that is L-O-S-S. But L-O-S-E to be pronounced always as lose only. Next, principal and a principal. Principal can be a noun or adjective. As a noun, it refers to the person in charge of a school or organization. Example, Rohan was called into the principal's office. As an adjective, it means most important. The principal person for this meeting is to brainstorm ideas. The principal reason, which means important reason for this meeting is to brainstorm ideas. So principal has two meanings. One, it refers to the person who is the head of a school or a college. He is called principal. And at the same time, principal also refers to uh, something which is important as an adjective. But principal, P R I N C I P L, principal always is a noun, is a, a firmly held belief or ideal. So Rosie doesn't lose surprise parties as a matter of principle. He is a man of principles, we say that, right? He is a man of principles, meaning he is a man of great beliefs or uh, ideals. Inquiry and enquiry. Inquiry and enquiry both mean a request for information. Inquiry is the standard American uh, spelling, while enquiry is the British spelling. So, which just both of them mean a request for information. Can you make an inquiry about the next train? Can you inquire at the reception regarding the admission process? So, enquire or inquire, both of them refer to the same in terms of meaning. However, inquire is most commonly used in American language while enquire is used more in British English. Stationary and stationary. S-T-A-T-I-O-N-A-R-Y Stationary means unmoving, without movement. The revolving door remained stationary because Rosie was pushing on it the wrong way. So stationary means without any movement. You are not moving. Okay. Uh, say for example, uh, the animal is, uh, you know, remains stationary. The animal remains stationary in the same place, which means without any movement. Without any movement. Stationary. This is the next one. Stationary, N-E-R-Y, refers to letter writing material, especially to high quality paper, Peter printed his resume on his best stationery. Stationery refers to 
the material very specially used for writing like the papers or the books, the notebooks they are called stationery. Than and then. Than is used for comparisons. Example, Rohan runs faster than Rahul. Then is used to indicate time or sequence. Rahul scored a century and then relaxed. Then is used for comparisons while then is used for indicating time or a sequence. Toward and towards. Toward is a standard in American English while towards is a standard usage in British English. So both are absolutely okay when it comes to Indian usage because uh, we follow a combination or rather a mixture of both American and British English. So therefore, it does not matter whether you use toward or towards when it comes to Indian usage. However, you need to understand that toward is more an American English whereas uh, towards is more a British usage. And uh, finally, the last uh, statement uh, in this concept, whose and whose, who apostrophe yes. W H O S E who's who apostrophe yes is a contraction of who is who is calling you at this hour. So who apostrophe yes stands for who is. It's a short form for it. Whereas whose is a possessive pronoun that means belonging to someone. Peter, whose phone hadn't stopped ringing all morning, barely ate anything for breakfast. Well, friend, this brings us to the end of this session today on the most confusing words in English language. I'm sure you have understood the concept very clearly. And remember, you must start using them without any confusion. Because you have understood it without any confusion. And we have also discussed the, uh, these words with examples so that we got a crystal clear idea of what these words mean and how we need to put them into usage. Thanks for listening to the class. Have a great day. See you in the next class. Stay tuned for more updates. So that uh, subscribe to this channel so that you get updated immediately as and when I post a video relating to English language or competitive exams or maybe relating to soft skills that might help you to improve or to enhance your personality. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.